We debate to interact, to inform, to entertain, but above all, we debate to transform our country with new ideologies. And that's what we do on Kenya's number one interactive debate platform, The Great Debaters Contest. I am your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperancia Kapanga. And the motion of the day today is, Western aid is a source of poverty in Africa and should be banned. Quite controversial. Indeed it is. Proposing the motion is Mboni Girls High School. And opposing the motion we have St. Charles Luanga Kitui. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. I was recently going through an article by Forbes Africa written in 2016. Apparently, UNEP visited a marginalized village in Mali and built two wells for them. Three years later, they visited the same area with the same intention of building another well. Unfortunately, those two wells had collapsed. On asking the village chiefs on why those wells had not been repaired, they shamelessly told them that they were waiting for the UNEP officials to facilitate the reconstruction of those wells. Well, if you call me Masika, but I'll be sure to get a response. And I'm here to firmly propose a motion that states, Western aid is a source of poverty in Africa and should be banned. Well, Western aid is money, materials, or services given or loaned by an organization in rich countries, or rather developing countries, to help people in the poor countries. Poverty is a state of being poor and not having enough money to sustain oneself. And to ban is to prohibit something and decide that it is no longer allowed. Examples of countries in Africa that receive Western aid include Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, Mauritania, Lesotho, Swaziland, Togo, and Chad. Aid may be in different forms, including skills, money, as well as military assistance. Well, money that United Kingdom markets to gullible electorate in the highly indebted poor countries ends up creating inorganic, bloated, and unwanted bureaucracies. It is highly ironical that a country like France that offers aid to a country like Djibouti has half the number of bureaucrats. Now, a study was done by University of Cape Town students to find out where our so much poor Djibouti gets the money to pay all their bureaucrats, and it is in what we so much depend on, Western aid. So in short, Western aid is, me is being made to look like it, it belongs to the few rich people, while the poorer people in Africa are getting poorer and poorer and poorer each day. Again, there is an influx of expatriates in Africa. According to Forbes website, it states that 5%, there is an increase in 5% in influx of expatriates in Africa, every, every developing country in Africa. Now, what stirs up my mind a little is the fact that we are having an influx of expatriates, yet we have so many graduates, like right here in Kenya, who even graduated with first class because we have an average of 25% who are doing manual jobs. They're doing manual jobs where there are very, very many, loads and loads of foreign expatriates doing the good jobs in Kenya. That is what we call the white collar jobs. Is this even fair? It's not fair that someone goes to a school, enrolls, studies, and is not able to do work according to what their, what their career states. Honestly speaking, this is not aid, but poverty in disguise, because aids tend to delay the development in, of business in Africa. According to the SDG number 001, we should end poverty in Africa. And definitely, Western aid is not the way to go. Thank you. Pastor Puzo, you have three minutes to make a statement. Poverty is not an accident. Like slavery and apathy, it is man-made and can be removed by the actions of human beings. Western, where is this place that we call Western? Western is a term used interchangeably with the term first world or developed countries, a culture which have been borrowed and incorporated by the Western culture. Aid is a transfer of resources in form of loans and grants from one country to another. Poverty is a state or a situation where one is not able to sustain its own basic necessities. And Africa, where is this place that we call Africa? Africa, our land. Africa, a landmass that is located to the east of Indian Ocean, is located to the west of Atlantic Ocean, is located to the south of Mediterranean Sea, and connects the Gulf of, Med of, the Gulf of Suez Canal with the Mediterranean Sea, and is also located in the southern, by the Southern Pacific Ocean. Now we come to the less privileged. My first point, Western aid offers education in form of scholarships. 
How many times have we seen our countries getting scholarships in form of students going to study in abroad countries? Like Malcolm X said in one of his quotes, education is the passport to the future. We know that in the, first, in the 21st century, the African country cannot do without education. And therefore, we as Africans, we need this education. And lucky enough, the Western countries have provided education in form of loans, in form of bursaries, in form of scholarship. We know of USA, it has been a very close friend to us. They have provided education in forms of loans, in forms of scholarship. And we have this scholarship from MasterCard Foundation, from Godwell Foundation, and from Stanford Education. My second point, Western aid has enhanced Africa in military skills and support. We know very well that African countries don't manufacture firearms. African countries is, are not strong in military. We know very well our saying that says, a country is strong as its own military leadership. We know very well the most powerful countries in this world are the countries that have the strongest leadership in their military skills. We know the example of America. United States of America is one of the strongest countries in this world. And this is because they have a very strong and leadership military skills. Therefore, countries like Kenya, the third world country, African countries, we borrow help in form of higher harms. They come and assist us during times of crisis. We know today's standard nation says UN is ready to assist the African countries, like in Somalia. We know the war is going on in Somalia, and therefore the US countries have chipped in, the United Nations have chipped in to assist us. Thirdly, Western aid is a form of investment and is a cause of job creation. How does this come about? They, they create job creation by investing in our own country, by bringing technologies, by bringing manpower, like in Africa. There are no many skills people, because the skills we, we gather around, they are not enough to sustain us in form of development. So we are less developing vis-a-vis the Western countries. And therefore, they help us by gapping the technological gap and the manpower gap. As I conclude, the technological gap, gap and the manpower gap is created by countries coming with their technologies and manpower to invest in the resources and hence creating employment and Africans gain profit and improve themselves. Thank you so much. Second proposal, you have three minutes for a rebuttal. Serena and Guy Mboni Girls here to strongly propose the motion that states Western aid is a source of poverty in Africa and should be banned. Well, the the first proposal, or the first opposer, sorry, who was just here, said that termed aid as a loan. So why should we, so why should we be receiving these loans? This Western aid, they offer scholarships. But these scholarships lead to brain drain because once they go study in those foreign countries, they will not come back. This will lead to brain drain. So you'll find that day by day, we will lack doctors, we will lack teachers, we'll even lack nurses. According to the Phantom newspaper, September 2015, Tanzania has been receiving very large inflows of Western aid to, since the 1970s to help stabilize its economy. The surprising fact is, even after receiving all these loans, they are still living in abject poverty. The economy is still very low and the budget deficits, they are still very wanting. Therefore, Western aid is, does not necessarily spur economic growth because if you're receiving aid from someone, you should mark an improvement. But uh, Tanzania, no. No improvement has been noted. In fact, the economy level has been deteriorating day by day, year by year. So let's see, in 20 years' time, where will Tanzania be, even after receiving all this Western aid? Moreover, according to the Guardian website, developing nations have low life expectancy due to civil strife, hunger, hunger diseases like HIV and AIDS, but the greatest cause is poverty. Out of the 40 countries in the world that have the lowest life expectancy, 37 of them are from the sub-Saharan Africa. 37 countries, low life expectancy. And what? They are still receiving Western aid since they obtained independence from their colonial masters. So just to say that this Western aid is not even helping us improve our lives. Because of the, according to the 
2009 data banks, Swaziland has recorded the lowest life expectancy at 32 years, while Japan has recorded one of the highest life expectancies in the world at 83 years. But then we come to say Western aid is helping. How? Sometimes aid is not necessarily a gift, but a loan, and poor countries may struggle to repay this loan. I doubt that we will love to leave our children's generation paying for a loan that, they're not, but that they did not bargain for. Aid is supposed to help the economy improve, but of late, this Western aid has been doing nothing of that sort. Western aid is only contributing to countries in Africa to sink deeper and deeper in the poverty scale. I wonder where should we continue receiving this aid and there's, nothing, there's nowhere it's going. We are not seeing the fruits of this Western aid. We are not seeing the exact place that has been improving due to this Western aid. As a continent, I am very sure that we are looking for a day to when we will be sustainable, sustain ourselves. But yet, due to this so-called Western aid, we are sinking lower and lower to the poverty line. I wonder, why should we continue receiving Western aid? How is it helping us to attain the sustainable development goals? It is not helping. So far, countries are still deteriorating. I think it is wise for us to work on ourselves, to stop receiving this Western aid because it is not helping us achieve any of our sustainable development goals. Thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes for a rebuttal. The idea of those who have to share with those who don't have still exists. And we need, we as African countries, to still have the move to be helped because we are poor and undeveloped. My, the, the, my delegate opposer has said, proposer has said that Africa the foreign aid that we receive as Africa has no, has no benefit to us because it is not seen where the work is being done. I like to say that the, when, the, when the aid is given, it is for the leadership under those countries, under those continents, to enhance and to initiate the work that should be done. Then, then he has talked about the skills about in here in uh, Africa that Western countries have taken away our, uh, we have un, people who are employed in the country, who, have edu who are educated, and yet they are not getting the jobs. I think we sh those foreign countries come to give us the systems. They don't come here to, as a profession. They come to give us systems on the way of doing things. That because we are poor, that is the fact, that Africa is poor and developed, the second, the second proposal, uh, proposal has also just said the, about the scholarship, that when our sons go there, they don't come back. I think there's no, you cannot stay in a place where you cannot get a job, you cannot, you cannot earn a living and die poor. You have to go out and to look. That's why when they get the scholarship, they get employed there because in the country, in these countries, there's no employment. Then a good friend, is the one who is with you in times of difficulties. And that's, this comes in here. When Western aid is here to support us, is there in times of crisis to help Africa. And Western aid has given us employment, is a source of employment. As you know, in Africa, we lack employment. These people have given us employment through initiatives, and it is very clear from data from Wikipedia that 25,000 25, to, 25 to 26 million citizens of this, our very own continent, stay and work in those foreign countries, because in the country there is no employment. Then they have assisted in provisions of, of funds to develop in, in development projects. As you can see, Angola got education health equipment from Canada, costing 2.3 billion. Also, South Sudan got 8.2 loan 
project from Britain to support the free education initiative. Then it has also promoted democracy. And in conclusion, it has also de uh, promoted democracy. Envoys have been tough on African leaders who try to contravene the provisions of the law and rights, human rights. This comes during uh, elections, especially in Uganda, Burundi, Sierra Leone, and Libya. Thank you. The proposers have been asked, what do they think will happen to Africa in the absence of Western aid in a matter of 50 or more years to come? And the opposers have been asked, with crippling problems like corruption in Africa, do they still expect Western aid to actually help us develop? <laughs> Proposer number three, you have three minutes to answer the question. To my colleague, uh, if 50 years to come. Kenya, we, let's take a country like Kenya. We will definitely find other solutions. Like if we embrace our own thinking, our knowledge, and be solution-centered people, solution-oriented oriented people, will definitely come up with ways to make sure that we do not depend on the Western aid. Uh, Faith Mbulans are here to strongly propose the motion that states, Western aid is a source of poverty in Africa and should be burned. A point of correction, African countries, we might be underdeveloped, but we are not uncivilized. You say that recently there was an influx of doctors into our country and they were just coming to they were just coming to our country to teach us how to use the newly in the new technology in our hospitals, but now these doctors are working for in our hospitals, and yet the university students who are graduates are do not have do not have work. According to World Bank, statistics carried out in 2006, African countries as like Cote d'Ivoire, Namibia, and are still categorized as the heavily indebted countries. This situation raises doubt whether Western aid inflows in our country is effective in stimulating economic growth and improving the standards of living or instead sinking Africa poorer and poorer into poverty. Furthermore, as aid flows in, citizens of the recipient countries become disenfranchised as the government only need to raise their revenue and to cut and cater for the foreign donors remaining in power. These such governments do not care about the opinions of their disgruntled people. According to www www.bweduconsults.com, 70% of the government income comes from Western aid, meaning such governments are seriously compromised and likely to and unlikely to act in accordance with the interest of their people. And as if not enough, Britain aid does not go to the intended population, as most of these politicians of these countries amass the Symphon the cash from the multi-million pound budget from US aid and UK aid. So why accept foreign aid in our countries if it's only going to increase the rate of corruption in these countries? Moreover, according to wealth.com, Africa only needs to take 0.7% aid from the gross domestic product. This is the total monetary value of all the goods and products all the goods and services produced in a country over a period of one year. However, these countries are taking aid mounting to 15.7%. Hence, this clearly shows how poorer and poorer we are becoming. Instead of giving us this aid, let us be self-solution oriented people. The Chinese say, give a man a fish, you have fed him for today. Teach a man how to fish, you have fed him for a lifetime. So to hell with Western aid and achieve our goal of ending poverty. Kadepuza, you have three minutes to respond to your questions. Uh, can Western aid really work in Africa? I think yes. Scholarships have come, taken away African sons. Azurai Moses went away to USA, 
studied fish, came back, CEO, Ghana Fisheries Limited. Investments that come from the Western aid, like the oil drilling. When oil drilling happens in a country like Kenya, the Western countries take away a portion of it. We, cannot, we can't de deny that. They take away a portion of it. And when they take it, the rest that remains here, we export it, get money, improve our economy. You have to know that Western aid is not a cause of poverty in Africa. When Western aid comes in form of money, it is not Western aid that, pro that it's not Western aid that causes poverty. Corruption is what causes poverty. You can't tell me that 70 billion sent to Africa by the World Bank per year, six times, six times, that money is taken away. Which means you are left with an approximate of 21 or 20 million to improve your country. So Western aid is not a cause of poverty. Um, we've seen very well that Africa itself and the countries which are in Africa have not yet planned their budget. So the former United States President Barack Obama gave us a very interesting plan to budget. He said you can you have only five steps. Now four. Number one, estimate available estimate the income which you get. Just estimate it. Number two, define major expenditure categories and give each a portion. Number three, use a budget summary sheet to track actual income and expenditure to see if you are right, if you are taking it the wrong way or taking it the right way. Uh, we as Africans have dug a hole of poverty. A hole, sorry. One of the best neurosurgeons in the world, Ben Carson, say that when you dig a hole, the only way to go is up. Western aid has come to improve Africa and has come to take Africa up, not to bring it down. That's what I can say. Look at the blog spot industry of UK. It's providing an estimation of one million to Ghana, to Sierra Leone, to Gambia. Not one million to, to as in, in the in the form of, as in every country. It's each country getting one million. So to conclude, without fear of contradiction and compromise, I've got to say that Western aid is not a cause of poverty. Look at, the Af look at Africa's population from 1965 to 2018, and you will see what I mean. An estimation of 570 million people addition Western aid comes to improve these guys, not to bring them down. Thank you. Proposers, you have one minute to make a final statement. Brother, he who lied to you that developing countries do not make budgets must have done a splendid job. Tell him bravo on my behalf. Aids tend to delay the development of business in Africa. It has kept Africans behind in terms of getting the confidence they need and experience they need to make businesses that will drive and succeed globally. If, if people in Africa understood what Western aid is all about, how the corporations work, and where our tax money goes, I know we Africans will demand change. So the sooner Africa can graduate from its, its over-dependence on aid, the better for all of us. Boni Girls is our name, and as always, debating is our game. Thank you. Opposers, you have one minute for a final submission. I'd like to answer the question which was raised by my sister there. Like, corruption is not a cause of poverty in Africa. These loans that we get and grants we get from the Western countries, they come with strings attached. For example, a country can decide to give Africa a loan and then they have to tell them, you have to form anti-corruption commissions. And when the anti-corruption commissions are formed, they are the ones which control that money and it cannot enter into people's pockets. I'd like to conclude by saying, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. And if you want to walk far, walk with others. That's a quote from the first president of the United States of America, George Washington. He meant that African countries, we want to walk far. And we have to walk with others. We want to beg efforts. We want to beg 
support from Western countries so that they can support us to walk far. Others, thank you. I'd like to welcome my sisters to join this site so that we can walk far. Be blessed. Bonny girls. Masi, good start. I would like, I would love to know that article that you started with because it was uh, quite interesting. I think it was a good way of starting over. The definition of motion was on point. Um, and then you started giving your submissions like the influx of expatriates and the likes. And then you, at some point you give a, a percentage, about 25% of the graduates are doing manual jobs, which is a good statistic, but you need to tell us where, I mean, and your source as well. But I think the others you gave your sources, that was commendable. Serena, fair cross-examination. I think it was just one line. And if you notice, uh, Bill took almost all his time cross-examining you. So that tells us who paid more attention than the other, all right? Not unless you agree with their submissions, you must as well cross-examine them. Faith, good job. Stood out as well to me. Um, I think I love the world back example. Um, but to the team, which I think Faith uh, really pointed out. You know, when we receive foreign aid, we have an allegiance to that nation in a way, is it? And I think you've seen the current situations where there are some certain votes that are happening, uh, maybe the United States as a veto power trying to push certain agendas at the UN, and you see countries that vote to their favor and the likes. And there's a relation, if you look at, to what they receive. And I think that, that, that stood out for me because Faith pointed that out, talking about interference on political and economic activities uh, to the nations. That was commendable. St. Charles Luanga, uh, Shadrach Mutuku, good introduction. You introduced basic terms in your motion. You also demonstrated that you're well researched by quoting reliable sources. Then learn to manage time, because I realized at the end you had a lot to say, and the bell had rung, I think, three times. And so it's like you had not managed your time well. So learn to manage your time so that you can say everything you have to say within the stipulated three minutes. Then Bill Mwendwa, you seemed unsure of issues at the beginning. So when you start, it was almost like you were trying to remember the questions that your opponent had posed on your side or the issues they had raised. And so the good thing to go about it is to you know, you internalize the question and you try to bring it out when responding to it. Fortune Mwema, good mastery of content. Um, you quoted from reliable sources. Then you could have given other sources of poverty in Africa, like if it is not Western aid that is causing poverty. In fact, the whole group, you could also have shed more light on what is really causing poverty in Africa. The numbers are in. It's been a heated debate. And it's been a good run from both schools, but one school has to win, and the other one has to learn. With 69% from the judges, and 73.8% for the winning school, St. Charles Luanga, the judges, so it fit to award you 69%. Let's appreciate them. Which means that the winners of the debate today are St. Teresa Mboni girls with 73.8%. Congratulations to both teams. Remember, there's never a loser in debate, just a learner. Until next time, I have been your host, Chris Buru. And I am Esperanza Kapanga. Catch you next time. <laughs>